And now it's time for our Green Beat, where Mark J. Dottie finds out how the Terranea Resort is helping to keep our oceans clean. And when we come back, we'll have tips to help you get set for the holidays. And in sports, a Dodger pitcher and his wife have a lot to celebrate, and we'll tell you why when we come back. Are you getting this, honey? Oh, prime time. We are rolling. <laughs> Challenge your kids to be active and eat healthy. Yeah, all right. Let's see what you can do. They might surprise you. Search We Can for more ideas on how you and your kids can get healthy together.
Hi, I'm Deputy Chris Knox, here to remind you of the importance of traffic safety near our schools. School zones are always 25 miles per hour. A school zone only applies when students are outside the school in the morning and the afternoon. Parents should always allow extra time when dropping off their children and should know the school's drop-off routes and procedures. Motorists should also focus on safe driving near schools. Some of the violations I see near schools are cell phones, speeding, double parking, seat belts, and child safety seats. Students should always remember to cross safely at intersections and not to run out in front of cars. When we follow these rules, we can all stay safe. And in sports, we are happy to announce that Dodger pitcher Clayton Kershaw has been awarded the Roberto Clemente Award for 2012. Now this award is given out every season to players who have given back to our society in honor of the great baseball player and humanitarian Roberto Clemente. Clayton Kershaw was inspired by his wife's dream to build a school in Africa. And since then, Kershaw's challenge was born. But Clayton is not the only Kershaw receiving an award. Last year, I had the opportunity to interview Ellen Kershaw about her dream, and that story has won a National Telly Award. Here's a clip from Ellen Kershaw's interview. Ellen Kershaw stands with her husband Clayton as all of his baseball dreams are coming true. Now Clayton is pitching in to make one of Ellen's dreams a reality. I read that you actually saw an uh, interview on the Oprah Winfrey show <laughs> with the kids and the people that had been, yeah. gone to Africa. So tell the story and then we'll kind of go from there. Yeah. So eighth grade, Oprah changed my life. Okay. Kind of. We, um, I just was watching her and I saw the kids on TV and I saw their faces and it just seemed surreal. I feel like we just live in this bubble sometimes in America, especially at that age where we just kind of feel like the world revolves around ourselves. And yeah. so for me to see just a picture of that and just a glimpse of something that just seemed so foreign was amazing. And so right then and there, I knew that that was what I was meant to do. It just, I felt so ingrained in my blood that that's what I needed to do someday. And it took a long time to get me there. I felt like I'd never been out of the country, never been anywhere by myself. And so for me to get that first passport stamp was really exciting, but it took six years for me just to kind of grow into the thought that this is what I needed to do. And I realized how important those six years were because I really do feel like I grew and matured during those years yeah. and, and really wanted to make it my own. So I just went over there by myself and really feel like I found a lot of who I was over there, you know. What was it like for you to go, I mean, all the way to Africa, you talk about yeah. leaving the country and it being so foreign. What was, were you yeah. scared? Were you nervous? Or? No, I mean, I should be. Every part of the trip, I mean, I, I got on a British Airways flight and I'm sitting there and I'm 18 years old and just waved goodbye to everyone I knew. And it was amazing, just this sense of peace that kind of came over me, just that this was it. This was kind of, I'd almost gotten anxiety from not going and from not answering that call that I just kind of felt like I was right where I needed to be. And another thing that you're working on, of course, is Kershaw's Challenge. Yeah, yeah and talk about that because we want mm -hmm. people to know about that. Mm -hmm. So when we got back, it was really cool because everyone was really interested and in wanting to hear about our trip and everything. And so we just decided it is awesome to raise awareness and it's awesome to get the word out about it. But what's even cooler is to put something into action where people can jump on board and keep, people can be a part of something. And so it was Clayton's idea. He was like, you know, I really want to do something that with every strikeout I make, I want to be able to give. And that way, when people are watching you pitch, they're able to see that there is something in life that is so much greater than baseball happening. And so I was just blown away and so touched by that idea. So we started Kershaw's Challenge because um, there's a little girl over in Zambia named Hope and she has just stolen our hearts. She's 11 years old and HIV positive and um, a double orphan. And so it's just, um, we, she's our inspiration and we want to have a home for her. And so we decided to build Hope's home and it's basically going to be an orphanage to house 12 to 15 kids and just a place where we are able to take them out of their environment and just let them thrive and it's amazing how far encouraging words food and just a, a safe place to call home it's amazing how far that can take these kids and so I mean if we're able to get 12 to 15 kids and just be able to raise them in this house I mean, the sky is the limit for them. And so it's been cool to see how people have just come on board with us and wanted to be a part of it. And we still have a ways to go, but we feel like 
we've been called to do this and we want to make a difference and we want to give these kids a home and a chance and so we're we're really excited to see the end result of it. And if you would like to support the Kershaw's charity, you can always go to kershawschallenge.com.